Hi there, friends. This video is about providing freedom in research labs. How to do it, why it's important, and what are some risks and difficulties. So let's get right into it. Why is it important? Well, there's going to be two perspectives. The one is from the perspective of the individual researcher in the lab and the perspective of the lab as a whole. From the perspective of the individual researcher, this is really about making people happy because if they can pursue whatever they're currently very interested in, I think this will contribute to their happiness and also to their motivation. It just makes people happy if they can do whatever they're interested in. For example, some people have broad interests and so it's great if they can actually get to pursue some of these diverse interests rather than just staying focused on their particular project. Another point is that it's one way to get out of some of the rather more monotonous lab tasks by just trying out some fun new things and playing around with science basically. So overall I think it's great for individual people if they have the freedom to pursue some other projects because it just makes them happier. When lab members are happier, they tend to also be more motivated and more productive, more collaborative, and it makes the whole place better. And this leads us to the lab perspective, basically it makes the whole lab better, but also in some specific ways because if people can explore some new ideas that they have and pursue some research lines that are different from the main project, that they work on, this can really open up some completely new research lines. Some new discoveries can be made this way. They can they often come out of such side projects and then they can become more real and become the next funded project, but only if you give people that sort of freedom to pursue their ideas. So these side projects can often be high risk, so they wouldn't be necessarily part of funded research, which tends to be more low risk. Um, so, but given that the high risk actually can work out, this can really open up some new opportunities that are fantastic. So I think providing freedom to people in the lab is a super important aspect of lab management and also of lab culture. It makes the lab as a whole more creative and a better place to work. So how to do it? How to champion freedom in a lab? I think the most important point is about communication and about managing potential conflicts in terms of goals. It's clear that many researchers in a lab will have primary responsibility for the project that currently funds them, a fellowship or a research grant. In the end, there will be a report to write on that, and this is basically taxpayers' money, usually in some form or other. So this is clearly the priority. And that needs to be clear. <laughs> and so this is, this is why communication in this case is so important. It is very important to tell people right when they come in, your primary responsibility is for this project. However, if you fulfill the project's goals and you make steady progress, then beyond that, you are absolutely free to pursue whatever you like, as long as it kind of fits within the lab. Now, this is, I think, the most important point to make, to make sure that the lab um, supports this as long as progress is made on the tasks that people are assigned to. But what can be done beyond that? First of all, it's resources. So it's important that the resources are being provided to the people that want to pursue actually such side projects because they're often not free. They're often also not super expensive because they're small exploratory projects, but they tend to be also not be free. Another point is encouragement. People should feel encouraged to pursue these side projects. I mean, as long as they're not getting overwhelmed and as long as they make steady progress on the project to which they are assigned, um, there should be an atmosphere that this is actually welcome. This is actively encouraged. Do this, pursue whatever you find currently interesting. An important ingredient in doing that is trust. If you don't trust people to do the right thing, then you can't do that. And also micromanaging doesn't really work in this case. You just need to let go and assume that people are responsible. And it's important to remember that this is really a lab culture thing. This needs the whole lab, not just the PI. I mean, the PI is important because the PI needs to set the tone and needs to provide the general setting but then it also requires participation by the lab members. Because, for example, this may require collaboration with other lab members and it basically assumes that people are interested in uh, pursuing some of these side projects. Not, not everybody will be, and this is also completely fine, but there need to be people in the lab that actually are interested in doing this. Otherwise, this, of course, cannot work. So if you're a PI, then I think your responsibility is to set the general tone and to encourage it, provide the resources as discussed. And if you're a lab member, 
then I think you need to think about is this something for you and if so then contribute. And if this is not a culture that's established in your lab, maybe this is a conversation to have. Now, what are risks and difficulties? And I would lie if I were to say that this has always worked perfectly in our lab. It hasn't. And the major problem is when the side projects get sort of out of hand and people get overwhelmed with the side projects or get overly tempted to spend more time on this a side project and then neglect the actual responsibility to the project that funds you or the fellowship that actually supports them. And this is actually where you need to then interfere. You need to say, yeah, you, you cannot do this because you need to first work on the project as we have discussed when you join the lab, for example. So these are difficult conversations to have because they appear like you're reining people in. But I think this is still important and this is an important way to manage these risks and everybody involved really needs to understand that. And again, this risk is real, but I think it also can be managed well with the right communication. The other potential risk is that things just really become too aimless when everybody pursues a pet project that is like only marginally connected to what a lab does, then maybe this gets overwhelming and out of hand. Um, but that is also, again, a matter of communicating, you know, if somebody wants to work on a completely different system that is completely outside of the perspective of this lab, then maybe this is a point of a conversation to have that maybe we couldn't do this because we should stay closer to what the lab actually does and the overall mission of the lab. But that is something that everybody has to calibrate for themselves, the PI of the lab and also the, um, this is a conversation to have with the lab members. So this is it. I think this is a very important topic. And so if in your lab, whether you're a PI or a lab member in a group, and doesn't have a clear policy on these side projects and on the freedom that's provided. I think this is a very important conversation to have. And I think it makes everything better. It makes people happier, makes labs more creative and more productive, and this way everybody really wins. And with that, happy creating. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.